Hello FlossTube, my name is Leanne and I am Leanne Stitches here on YouTube and on Instagram. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook as Forbidden Fiber Co. Today is Friday, April 12th, and this is my 37th FlossTube, 38th FlossTube, <laughs> last one was 37. It's been about five weeks since my last video. Um, I don't really have a lot to show. That's why it's taken me so long to film. I've been doing a lot of knitting and sample knitting and test knitting and um, not as much cross stitching, but I do have some good stuff to show, including two finishes and one new start and then a little bit of work on my whips. Um, I didn't get to work on all of my usual full coverage whips that I've been working on for my kids and my husband this past month because of the test knitting, um, but I do have some stuff to show. Okay, let's start with the finishes. The first finish I have to show you is Temperature Quaker. The pattern is by Stitch and Mommy on Etsy, and I used all of the called for DMC in the varied temperature range because we get both hot and cold here in um, Memphis, Tennessee, or north of Memphis. Um, Okay, let's start with the finishes first because that's the most fun. The first finish I have to show you is Temperature Quaker. This pattern is by Stitch and Mommy on Etsy and I used all of the called for DMC um, in the varied temperature chart because that is, uh, we get both hot and cold in um, where I live, just north of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I stitched this one over one on a 28 count even weave of some sort. I'm not really sure. Um, I think it's from a Bestitch Me box, maybe their Halloween box a couple years ago. So yeah, um, you can see we had a very short spring. We got super hot in April very quickly. And um, yeah, that's really all interesting that happened last year. Um, it was pretty a pretty normal year for us. I'm trying to think, we did have snow, I think, up here and frost in February, but again, that's normal for us. So yeah, I think these are fun to take a look at the weather for the year. Um, I haven't started one for 2023 yet. I, I really haven't decided which pattern I wanna do. I wanna do the lunar temperature chart that we have in the, um, in the shop, cause it'd be fun to do something for um, the eclipse that we had, even though we didn't get totality here, I thought it would be fun but I haven't picked my colors yet. <laughs> anyway, so that's that one. The next finish I have is very exciting because I've been trying to finish this one. It's been on my finish list for three years. It's Quaker Pumpkins by Liz Matthews. I stitched this two over two on a 32 count even weave. Um, the closest color we have in the shop, I dyed this um, fabric when I was first learning to, um, to dye fabric. And the closest color we have in the shop is Spearmint. Um, and I just really love how those colors pop off the green. And then I used our, um, I did a conversion a few years back, right after this first came out. And we do have kits in the shop, um, so yeah. I just love these pumpkins and those crows. And I um, I struggled a lot with whether or not I was gonna keep it all Hallow's Eve or whether I was gonna use Georgia Girl Stitchin's chart for um, Harvest Blessings, because I really loved that. But I feel like if I was gonna use the Harvest Blessings, I really needed to do it, to know that from the start because she didn't stitch these crows and then also she changed the border color from a black to a more chocolate brown. And so I ended up just keeping it All Hallows Eve. I mean, it's a pretty fallish chart, even though it says All Hallows Eve, I feel like it could stay up all fall long and I can't wait to get it framed. I think I'm actually gonna take this. We have our 901 Stitchers group um, meetup at Stitchers Inc. tomorrow. So I think I might actually take this to go get framed so it'll all be ready for fall with my, um, ooh, with my um, Trick or Treat Fairy from Mirabilia. Oh, I'm gonna have to dig that out and get both of those framed. Oh, that'll be cool. Okay, whips. <laughs> the, 
The first whip I have to show you is Sir Thomas by Glendon Place. And I started this um, with Sarah from Memphis Sari. Well, she started it before me, but um, I started it because of her. How about that? She, she, influ she influenced, what's the word? She, um, I can't think of it. Anyway, um, we are now stitching it with a group of stitchers um, just on Instagram. I don't think we have a, do we have a hashtag? Sir Thomas of Glendon Place Sal, I think. And we've divided it up into 12 parts and are stitching one part per month. And we do a little Zoom call once a month too. And I finished my May part, which was big. All this blue and this little thing. Now this also gets back stitched, and I haven't done that yet, but there's um, my June part is another little thing of corn here. And then my uh, July part comes down here and there's more back stitching on the feathers here. So I figure I'm just going to back stitch that when I do the other back stitching because I was kind of done by the time I got there. Not because this was hard. I actually really enjoyed it. I just kind of took one color, one string at a time because I found that if I did more than that, I ended up ripping a lot because I can't count. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, where was I going with that? I don't remember, but I was, it just, I didn't have a lot of stitching time. That's what it was, is I really only had about an hour, a half hour a day for the past week or so. And so it just took me a lot more days than I would have liked because it was a lot denser than I realized when I drew that to be my May piece. Um, so I'll just do the back stitching when I'm done with the other section, the next section. Um, so this is my June and then this right here and the feet is my July, which is gonna be another Stitchy, stitch heavy section. So I figure I'll do with the back stitching then. Have I repeated myself enough? <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, I'm stitching this on, let me pull it back up. I'm stitching this, nope, that's sideways. Third tries a charm, right? I'm stitching this on uh, with using all the called for Sullivan's and Krynek and beads. And I am stitching it on a piece of 28 count Let's see, 28 count China Pearl Jobelin by Witchell. So that's Sir Thomas. Next piece I have to show you is the Moons of 2022. And I stitched this for a couple days around the full moon, one or two days, sometimes three, it just depends on how I'm feeling. I didn't get a lot of stitching time on this this month. Um, it seems to be kind of the theme here. I didn't get as much progress as I usually did. I think the first night I only put in like one piece of thread. And then the second night I had some time during the day, I think. So there's where it's at. And I stitched this hill in here and this part here and those little deer. I think they're deer. So yeah, it's definitely different from when I got all of this stitched the last month, but progress is progress, right? Let me show you the whole thing. I haven't stitched anything on the top yet. And I think I'm gonna put November and December moons in there, in November and December. I said that last year and then I didn't even stitch it in November and December, so we'll see. But that's the plan right now. So yeah, I absolutely love stitching this. I'm using the called for silks, the NPI silks. I splurged and did some retail therapy one weekend when I was having a bad weekend. And I'm stitching it two over two on a 32 count even weave of some sort. And again, it was when I was learning to dye, so I don't have a color, but um, we did just bring a brand new fabric colorway to market in March called Vintage Doily. And it is really close to this. It, you can't see it in the screen, but there's a little bit of a pink um, undertone to this creamy fabric and it definitely, Vintage Doily definitely um, is the closest thing we have. I don't think we've put it in the shop yet since we've come back from Nashville, but it will definitely be up there in the next couple months. The next piece I have to show you is New Year's Eve Fairy. And I started working on this because after I finished um, Temperature Quaker and then I finished 
Quaker pumpkins. I felt like I was on a roll and I was like, what is the next thing on my finish list for this year? That would be the quickest thing to finish. That would, that needs the least amount of work. And while I really didn't have much of a start on New Year's Eve, Miss New Year's Eve fairy, number one, I borrowed this pattern from Sarah. Um, and so I'd like to get it back to her, but number two, it's probably the smallest project. And I remember when I stitched Easter fairy that as long as I put some decent time into it, it went really fast. Plus I just like her. So I pulled her out and stitched on her for a couple days until, I think until we went somewhere first. We went to New Orleans for the kids, a couple days for the kids' spring break. And I think that kind of broke my stitching streak in April. So let me get this a little bit smaller so I can hold it closer to the camera. So there she is. I think the last time I showed her, I had only been working on the dress. I don't know if I'd gotten to any of the skin yet. Um, I mean, I'll put up a picture so you can see where I was, but I definitely got to work on her wings and her skin and her hair. And I got a lot of progress on her for just two or three days. So um, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is keep, keep going on her wings and finish out her wings. And then I'll probably go back down and finish out her dress. So yeah, I think maybe another, if I get another solid week on her, I might be able to start the beading. The, so that was all my whips. And then I did have one new start I think I just started. No, I had two new starts. I'm gonna have to go get the other one. Okay, let me show you this one first. This is Eggs All Around by Glendon Place. And I picked this up at Market with Sarah. And um, we started this on Easter with Gary from Garon Stitchery. And Sarah and I started it so that we could start it on Easter. And then the plan is to finish Sir Thomas and then split eggs all around up in 12 parts again so we can finish it in a year um that i think or, or by easter of 2026 we haven't quite decided yet we just knew we wanted to start on easter but not put it as an active whip until after sir thomas was done gary however is a really fast stitcher and he's just like blown us all out of the water he's already he's already almost done all the way with all the inside eggs and working on his first outside eggs so i have a I want to call it a decent start because I spent a good amount of time on it, but it's pretty pitiful in reality. <laughs> so there's my first egg. And I actually, um, I'm using DMC. If you buy her kit, it's kitted in Sullivan's to keep the cost down because of the amount of beads and, and all that stuff. But I'm just using the DMC because since I have a DMC master set, but sure enough, I was out of two skeins of floss, two colors of floss to do this first egg. I don't know how that happened or why I picked the egg that I didn't have the floss at. So um, up until very, very recently, the closest craft store where I could buy DMC was about 45 minutes away. I had to drive down to um, a part of Memphis and go to Hobby Lobby, or I could drive about five, 10 minutes further and go to Michael's. Um, but we just got our very own Hobby Lobby that is five minutes from my house. So I waited for the Hobby Lobby to open. And then I went and I got those two skeins of floss. And um, my plan is to finish this egg, except for the beading, because there's this this part in here is beading. Um, and then I'm gonna put it away until Sir Thomas is done. So there's my teeny tiny start on eggs all around. I'm gonna go get the other start. Okay, it actually took me kind of a long time to find that. I, I've had, I, don't, I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, this was a completely unplanned start, but I was watching um, a couple of floss tubes and seeing on Instagram, and I saw a bunch of people start this on Easter, and um, it's called He Is Risen. They Actually, I saw um, like Stitch and Mommy and a couple of other people, I think started on Good Friday, and I started it on Easter. So I did two starts on Easter because I just, I don't know. I have extra stitching time, I think. So this is artwork by Donna Gelsinger and um, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. There is a mini version, but I decided to go for the big one because why not? Um, and I did a pretty decent start. I couldn't tell you how many stitches I got. Somewhere around a thousand probably. Um, there's my start. I love how you can kind of already see how the sun rays are coming in. Um, so yeah, it was just a lot of blue and pretty easy stitching. I'm stitching this um, two over one tent stitch 
on a 28 count Lugana, probably, um, easy grid, easy guide. I never know what that is. Um, so it's fun. I gotta search the edges because they're all, I didn't, I, I, I decided to do it so quickly that I didn't even have time to properly prep my fabric. I just cut and went. So yeah, not really much to show, but it was really fun. And okay, that is all I have for stitching. I do have some haul and I have a little giveaway. Um, so let's do the giveaway first and then I'll get into haul because I know not everyone likes watching haul. I don't have a lot either. So, okay. So for the past two floss tube episodes that I did, I was supposed to do a giveaway because someone had bought an extra kit, one of our kits, and they wanted me to give it away. And I am so out of practice at this that I just kept completely forgetting that I needed to give it away. And she ended up giving it away on Reddit, I think. I saw it and I messaged her and, and she's like, oh no, it's fine. I know things get busy. But I felt really bad because that means I, I, I was supposed to give you guys something and I didn't. So I brought one of these from the shop. It's one of our little project bags um, that we hand dye in the shop and then we embellish with vinyl and we make a little um, zipper pull that can also be used as a scissor fob and it says live, laugh, love. It can actually also be used as a project keeper if you are a knitter or crocheter. Anyway, inside we put together these little kits a couple of years ago and we just have a few of them left in the shop. It's all one of a kind stuff. It comes with a pattern called a stitcher's life. Um, and it's completely charted in one of a kind colors, meaning it's kind of like, if you follow Victoria Sampler, um, they have their like creative patterns where they just give you a color idea by, um, by charting it in color and then you pick your colors. Well, that's kind of the same idea here. So we kind of have pick a color, pick a brown, pick a color, pick a gray. So like for the thimbles, we said pick a gray. And then, sorry for the crinkles, we gave all of these one of a kind flosses that are missed eyes or leftovers from floss club. And so you can see you've got a gray. This one's kind of brown. It's more of like a purpley brown and an orange and a purple. Oh, we do have a brown. There's a brown. I'm sorry if I'm going through these too fast. And a green and then some variegated because you know we love to do variegated flosses. Um, so you basically pick from these one of a kind colors, which you want, which ones you want to use where. And then we also have a one of a kind piece of fabric. And the one included in this kit is um, 32 count Belfast linen and it's an eighth of a yard. And we kind of tried to pick the floss and fabric to go together. We did the best we could. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, so if you would like to enter the giveaway, leave me a comment. Let's see, use the word stitcher, since it's called a stitcher life, stitcher's life. And I will pick a winner on my next floss tube or probably before my next floss tube because I always feel super awkward like doing that whole thing. And I will send it to you. I'm just gonna pop this in real fast because it's been so long since I've done a giveaway that I forgot to tell you the rules. Do not use the word giveaway or free or any of those other words that trigger the bots and the people who just want free stuff and aren't actually stitchers. Um, you must be 18 or older so that I can legally have your address. There is no replacement value for this. So if the post office loses your package or something happens to it, that's it. I, I, unfortunately, that's just the bad luck of the, the postal system these days. Uh, again, use the word stitcher in your comment, not stitchers. Okay, bye. Okay, giveaway day. Haul. If you are not gonna stay for the haul, thanks for watching. Um, if you are, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing, and I talked about this on my last um, floss tube aftermarket, is um, this is called Woodland Wonder. And I had ordered it at market. I just didn't have it yet because um, she needed to, um, can I say um any more times? She needed to send it to me. The reason why she didn't have it at market 
was, uh, she wasn't expecting it, but she did get a model stitch back, completely framed, beautifully framed. And I just fell in love with it, so I ordered it. And so I got that, plus I got the embellishment pack with the beads and the chronic. So I have that. And then I've been collecting these all year so far, but I have, of course, cottage garden samplings because I cannot stay away from them. They're a fabulous house series, and I've just been, I'm on the auto ship from Garon Stitchery. So there's Santa's house, castle, greenhouse, and cottage. And I'm a little bit obsessed with gardening, so I'm gonna start with greenhouse. And to make me even more weird, um, I really couldn't decide what fabric I wanted to stitch these on, so we created a new colorway for market called Lunar. And it's a mixture of brown and gray, variegated, and I'm gonna pull a piece of 46 count because I, uh, I don't remember why I'm gonna stitch it on 46 count other than I might be crazy. But um, I'm gonna pull a piece of 46 count and I'm gonna stitch them all on that um, at some point because you know, I'm still working on Year in the Woods. I've only stitched three of those. I've got nine to go, but you know, a new series is fine. Anyway, I wanna start the greenhouse at some point. It's spring and I've been working in my greenhouse a lot and getting ready to plant out all of my seedlings and everything and I just, it, it also is the one with the least amount of stitching, let's be honest. Because cottage garden samplings patterns are pretty heavy stitching and they don't look it, but they are. So I figured that one I could actually get done fairly quickly, um, at least quicker than the others so far. Um, the fifth one, I just paid the invoice for the fifth one and I can't remember what it is, but they're all just so much fun. Okay, I also got Jack's Bash by Plum Street Samplers. I've been watching Olivia on Pumpkin Hollow Quilts stitch this and I just loved it. And I ordered the fabric for my eggs all around. I'm using the called for fabric and I don't know what that is at the time, uh, right now. I know that I should have told you that when I was showing it to you. Chrysalis Cashel Linen by Picture This Plus. Um, when I bought that, I got the sampler, I got the Plum Street, St Plum Street sampler pattern as well. Okay, then when I was at Stitchers Inc., my lo my LNS last month for the 901 Stitchers Meetup. Zan gave Sarah and me our Praise Really Stitches sleigh ride. We are starting these all together, I think December 1st, maybe. And we started kidding them up. So we're going to stitch them on Silent Night, which is a Forbidden Fabric of Fabric. And I think we're stitching them on 32 count, 36 count. They're petite beads. I think we're gonna try 36 or 40 and stitch it one over two. I can't remember for sure. I know I have a couple pieces in my closet right now that I'm supposed to be testing coverage on. I know that much. So I think I'm testing to see if we need 36 or 40. Anyway, um, it calls for a lot of fancy flosses. So what we did is we picked out all of the fancy flosses from the houses and I think the sleigh or Santa or something. And we got those fancy flosses. So we have Weeks Direworks Whiskey, Gentle Arts Dried Time, Simply, oh, this is still Gentle Arts. This one is Tin Bucket, the Gentle Art Tropical Ocean. This one, it's not coming out right. It's a really pretty blue. Kind of matches me. Um, Gentle Arts green apple, and then Weeks Dye Works Deep Sea. And so these are for all the houses. Um, you can see like that was Deep Sea, and then those were the greens, and then this one was that aqua. And then we started to kit up the beads and Krynik, but the LNS didn't have them all. So I got the three colors, whoo, the three colors of beads, which it's red, green, and gold. And then I got one of the Krynex. Okay, so while I was at Stitchers, a couple of market pieces fell into my basket because that happens. So this one is Primrose Cottage Snowman. And I'm gonna stitch this for my mother-in-law for Christmas because she loves snowmen. And it's really hard to find good snowman decorations now. So I thought, I don't know if I'll finish it like this or if I'll make it into an ornament. I guess it depends on how big or small I stitch it. 
an 18 count. It's four, five by three. So I don't know. We'll see. But um, I just, I saw that and thought it'd be really cute for her. And then I got this 12 monthly minute, 12 monthly minute minis also by Primrose, Primrose Cottage. I cannot talk. That's ridiculous. Anyway, I just love some of these and I think they'd be fun to stitch and I need some more small projects that I can finish quickly because I have too much full coverage and too many big projects like turkeys and full moons and full coverage and you know. Anyway, um, shop news, last thing, I haven't mentioned this before, but if you're interested in shop news today, and I don't know what time I'll get this video up, but it's, um, Fridays at 4 p.m. are always the Forbidden Fiber Co. shop updates. And we're doing something new today and I'm so excited. We're doing a countdown box just of fabric and we're calling it Color the Rainbow. I'll put a little graphic up there. It's the Color the Rainbow countdown box. And the idea is that we're gonna count down to the summer solstice using a rainbow of uh, fabric. And every day you can open a new color for 12 days. And the whole reason we came up with it is because my dye company discontinued the entire line of dyes that we use to dye fabric and floss and our cotton yarn. So we're having to reformulate everything. And it's kind of been a little bit of a nightmare. It's been a little bit fun because I do love to play with color and I do love to mix, but when you really need a color and you just can't get it right and you don't want to just give in to good enough. You want consistency in your dye lots because it's important to you. Um, it can be a little frustrating. Uh, but so we decided with this new line of dyes, I like to stick to primary colors and mix everything in house. I really don't like to use pre-mixed dyes and it's nothing against anyone who does. It's just my preference because I've seen too many pre-mixed dyes get discontinued. And obviously using primary colors only didn't keep me safe from that. But um, the way I mix colors when I get them and the way I test colors when I get them is I have what I call a full saturation level. And that's different depending on what you're dyeing. It could, you know, it's different for floss and then for fabric, then for yarn and all of that. So what I do is I take my full saturation measurement of dye and I take a red, a yellow, and a blue, and I mix those three dyes. And then I mix, you know, one part red, one part yellow, and I get my orange, one part yellow and one part blue, and I get my green, and one part blue and one part red, and I get my purple. And now I have my secondary colors. Well, then I mix the tertiary colors by mixing the secondary and the primaries together, right? It's all color wheel stuff that we all learned in elementary school. Well, that only gets you so far because you really need to apply it. It takes differently on floss than it does on fabric, than it does on cotton yarn. And so um, we are going to basically we have we are going to put that experimentation in this box so we have we have the rainbow of colors off of the first batch of primary dyes that we tested and they're going to be individually wrapped and numbered one through 12 you can choose from seven different counts of fabric you can choose whether you want an eighth of a yard or a quarter of a yard and you can choose whether you want vivid, which is going to be full, what we consider full saturation. That doesn't mean that you can't go deeper. This is just what we consider full saturation in the studio. And then we're going to have what we call sub subtle, which is going to be a paler color. That way, you know, you can choose which count you want. You can choose which size you like to stitch on as far as size of fabric. And depending on what kind of colors you like to stitch on, you can choose that. So those are going live in the shop today, Friday, April 12th at 4 p.m. Um, we plan to keep the pre-order open for a month, but we do have a capacity um, that if we meet it, we will have to cut those off. So if you're interested, get your pre-orders in early. And we're going to be shipping May 31st um, to, to be able to have a week for it to arrive and then be able to start counting down on, I guess you would open your first package on June 10th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, 32nd, 33rd, 34th, 35th, 36th, 37th, 38th, 39th, 40th, 41st, 42nd, 43rd, 44th, 45th, 46th, 47th, 48th, 49th, 50th, 51st, 52nd, 53rd, 54th, 55th, 56th, 57th, 58th, 59th, 60th, 61st, 62nd, 63nd, 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 
Did you catch all that? I tend to talk fast when I get excited. Anyway, so if you want to enter the giveaway, don't forget to leave a comment with the word Stitcher in it. Stitcher, not Stitchers. Um, and yeah, thank you for joining me today. And I hopefully will be back in a few weeks with lots more stitching to share. Bye.